is. Um, I'm Richard. This is my son Daniel out the front. This is us here. He's grown up. <laughs> but I think I've probably gone backwards a little bit. But first of all, if I could say thank you to June and the team at St Richard's, not only for inviting us here today, but also for giving us the opportunity to speak about our first-hand personal experience of what bereavement support can do to make a difference to, to a family. From the day Dan was born, he, he was always a cheeky chappy. He was always the life and soul of the party. I'm really going to embarrass him. <laughs> um, everybody adored Dan, and Dan adored everybody. But he was especially adored by his granny. And he was very, very close to her, and he used to spend Christmas, and he used to spend summer holidays having quality one-on-one -on -one time with her um, at her home. Unfortunately, my mum was diagnosed with cancer in January of 2008. Um, after refusing all sorts of treatment and care, she was moved into a hospice. Even at the hospice, Daniel would take great pleasure in moving the electronic bed, complete with granny in it, up and down, closing it, opening it, and spinning it round. He had great fun with that. Sadly, mum passed away in April of 2008. Um, so, as an accomplished singer, Daniel had planned and prepared to sing her favourite song at the funeral, which was Bright Eyes. Um, unfortunately, on the day, Daniel was too upset to even leave his seat. So he didn't quite get around to singing the song, and he's told me he's not going to sing it later. <laughs> <laughs> but you can do if you want. Um, but really, it was from that point, from the funeral, we, we noticed a difference in Daniel's personality. Um, he became very quiet, he became very withdrawn, he dropped out of the school choir. Um, because any form of limelight would just usually result in tears, which was very upsetting for us all. Um, and also, his vulnerability at the time, having just started at middle school, also made him susceptible to the school bullies, which just made the whole thing worse. And, but that's a completely different story. So whilst we did try and sort things out privately at home, we soon realised that we needed professional help. And, and it was at that point we contacted St Richard's. And our first meeting was with Anne Tompkins, one of the counsellors. And um, we didn't know what to expect. I've never been for counselling in any way, shape or form before. But what I can say was the service and care that we received right from the outset was, was unquestionable. It was faultless. It was absolutely fantastic. We were really made to feel part of, part of the St Richard's family. So the counselling started off with Anne doing quality one-on-one -on -one time with Daniel. Um, to gain his trust and his confidence and really get to the root cause of the problems. And as the programme progressed, we then moved into, into the family setting where I met Dawn and we had family days here. And I do actually still have my sound job. <laughs> because I did, become to, I did come to realise throughout the course of the programme that it probably wasn't just Daniel that required counselling. It was probably me as well. So I keep that with lots of fond memories. Um, from my perspective, I, I've got the utmost respect for everybody that works at St Richard's. If you look at the job that they do here, it really puts everyday niggles and grumbles into perspective. It's so important. They really make a difference to people's lives. They made a difference to my life. They made a difference to Daniel's life. And from Daniel's perspective, if we go back sort of three, three or four years ago when he was going through the counselling, Today um, he is, I'm going to embarrass him a little bit more now, he is um, the lead singer in one of his school's rock bands. This is Daniel here belting it out at the end of term in, uh, September, uh, in July. Sorry. Um, he's just been awarded the Outstanding Contribution to Music Award by his school. And through his work with the Stagecoach Theatre Group, he's not only been on stage at Her Majesty's Theatre in London, but more recently done four stints at Leatherhead Theatre in Calamity Jane. So he has totally got his confidence back. Is he the same cheeky chappy that he was when he first came here? No, he's not, because he's a teenager. <laughs> but he's a teenager that I'm immensely proud of. And, and, and the work that the guys do here is absolutely fantastic, because without their support all those years ago, he wouldn't be the young man that he is today. And it's so important, the work that goes on here. It really is, because it is life-changing. 